this week's Torah portion. We have an interesting set of people. They're known as the Miraglin, the spies. They weren't really spies. They were the agents of Moshe. And the question is, why did the spies come back with such bad results? Why is it that 10 of the spies came and said bad things about the land of Israel and Yeshua and Kalev said only good things? What's the difference between them? So let me share something with you, you know. A lot of times we have uh, conversations with people and we work together with people and uh, some people become part of our organizations and they do things for us, they do favors for us, we do favors for them. And we think of them as someone who can be trusted, who we can rely on. And then we ask that person to do us a favor and to take care of something. Don't worry, I'll take care of it. Do they take care of it? Absolutely not. Why don't they take care of it? Because you've told them to do something that you normally do. Do it instead of me. Do it in my place. Do it for me. When a person is told to do something for someone else and does not have his own heart into it, is not inspired by it, doesn't really care about it, and even if he cares about it, is not that enthusiastic that the person is willing to go ahead and to struggle with it, then what happens is what happened with the spies. You see, Moshe Rabbeinu should have had a session with the spies in teaching them how to be a shliach, how to be an emissary of God. See, a shliach, an emissary of God, has to identify what God wants, not what I want. Moshe Rabbeinu thought that this was automatic, that they, the ten leaders of the other tribes, understood that they were doing something not for themselves, they were doing something on behalf of the people, but as the agents of God. And they had to see it, their mission, as if they were an extension of God. What did Moshe Rabbeinu tell them? Go here, go there, see this, see that, come and give us a report. In other words, this isn't your thing. I want you to do something for me that you should do an honest job, but I want you to do it and take care of it and make sure that the job gets done. Well, the job got done. The results were terrible. The reason why the job could get done is because he did the work, but he didn't do so with heart. He didn't do so with enthusiasm. And therefore, after the job was done, he says, there's nothing more to do because I ain't going back over there. It's a terrible place to go. My Shabena was shocked. What happened? What happened was that the person reacted to going to Israel like it wasn't for him. It wasn't his thing to do. It was Moses' thing. It was Moses wanted it. Not that God wanted it for them, but that Moses wanted it. It was his shtick, it was his craziness. And they were not enthusiastic about Moshe's craziness. They would do what was told. Yes but they weren't going to be the agents of God. They weren't going to be the agents of Moshe. They were not extensions of the divine will. Yeshua, on the other hand, was the protege of Moshe. Yeshua felt that whatever Moshe wanted, that's what had to happen. And so Joshua, when he came to the land, only saw what Moses wanted him to see because he was Moses' representative. He didn't see anything else other than what Moshe Rabbeinu saw. So you may think 
that this is a higher level of shlichus, that when you send somebody and he knows only your way, and he is reflective of your will, and he does it as if you had done it himself, yourself, then this is the highest form of being a shliach. The answer is no. It's not the highest form of being a shliach. Because when you are enthusiastic because your teacher's enthusiastic, you don't relate to anybody else. You don't think anybody else is important. And when you don't consider the other person, the other person doesn't consider you as well. Caleb, Caleb on the other hand, didn't just want to see it from Moshe's perspective. Caleb wanted that the mission should succeed. He didn't just want to be an extension of Moses. He, just, he wasn't just happy to be Moses' extension. Caleb wanted and desired that the mission should be successful. That the desire of God, should be, not that he would be the agent and he would represent his Rebbe and he would be as if the Rebbe was there. No. He wanted that the ultimate desire of God and the ultimate desire of his Rebbe should succeed. In order to do that, he had to make the other people feel as if he was on their side. And he was on their side. Just he was on their side for, the, for a different reason. He was on their side in order to get them to see that maybe they were wrong. And because he did that, he was able to get their attention. Now, he wasn't successful because they refused to listen. They refused to accept what he said, but listen, they did. And so this is a tremendous lesson in being an emissary and doing something. Learn to care about the other person's perspective and desire results of the other person. Don't be somebody else. Don't do it because somebody else said. Even if you want to be like that someone else, don't do it. Make it your thing. And if you want to make it your thing, you have to make sure and want that the mission should succeed. The job, if you want to make sure that your company is successful, you can't just want money and want profits. You have to want that people should be happy with you so that they give you profits. And therefore you'll be concerned about your people and have tremendous PR with your customers. And that's the difference between Caleb and Joshua. Joshua was the leader for the next generation. But ultimately the kingdom goes to Caleb because he really got the message right.